subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 3rd of August. Tibetans in India support US Speaker Pelosi's Taiwan visit that infuriated China. Activists in UK protest against fake encounters in Balochistan by Pakistani forces. And Sri Lankan president calls for unity government to tackle economic crisis. And now for all the details. The members of Tibetan government in exile in India on Wednesday supported US House of Representatives speaker Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan that infuriated China, terming it justified. Pelosi left Taiwan on Wednesday after pledging solidarity and hailing its democracy, leaving a trail of Chinese anger over her brief visit to the self-ruled island that Beijing claims as its own. Members of the Central Tibetan Administration, also referred as the Tibetan government in exile in India on Wednesday, supported U.S. House of Representatives Speaker Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan that infuriated China. Pelosi's arrival on Tuesday night to the self-ruled island that China claims as its own had sparked an immediate backlash from Beijing, which said it would undermine China-U.S. relations. The high-ranking U.S. official left Taiwan on Wednesday after pledging solidarity and hailing Taiwan's democracy, leaving a trail of Chinese anger. The Tibetans, living in exile for years in the Indian hill town of Dharamshala, who themselves have been demanding Tibet's autonomy and Chinese withdrawal from the region, said Pelosi's visit is justified from U.S. point of view. I think uh, Speaker Pelosi's uh, visit to Taiwan is completely justified from a U.S. point of view. And uh, China ratcheting up uh, this as a major issue uh, does not bode well for the future relationship between the United States and China and uh, the relationship between uh, China and Taiwan. While India did not immediately comment on Pelosi's visit, neighboring Pakistan lending support to its all-weather ally China in a statement said, the visit will have serious implications for regional peace and stability. Meanwhile, Russia said the level of tension provoked by the visit should not be underestimated. Several Indian lawmakers, including ministers on Wednesday, took part in a Tiranga bike rally in capital New Delhi from the historic Red Fort as part of Har Ghar Tiranga celebration to mark the 75th year of India's independence. Har Ghar Tiranga is a nationwide campaign to encourage people to hoist the national flag at their homes to mark the occasion. India's Vice President Venkaya Naidu on Wednesday flagged off the Tiranga bike rally to pay tributes to freedom fighters from the iconic Red Fort in capital New Delhi as part of the Har Ghar Tiranga celebration to mark the 75th year of India's independence. Several lawmakers and ministers of ruling Bharatiya Janata Party BJP took part in the rally. Har Ghar Tiranga campaign under the ages of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav encourages people to bring the tiranga or tricolor home and to hoist it to mark the occasion. हम देश को अपने पूर्वजों के त्याग तपस्या और बलिदान जिनके कुर्बानी से देश आजाद हुआ उनको याद कर रहे हैं और इस अवसर पर हर घर झंडा हर हाथ झंडा लेकर के आजादी के अमृत महोत्सव को उत्सव के रूप में हम मना रहे हैं। Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday changed his profile picture on his social media handles to Tiranga ahead of Independence Day celebrations across the country. He had earlier asked citizens to use the national flag as their profile photo in their social media accounts between August 2 and 15 as part of the Har Ghar Tiranga celebrations. Several party leaders followed the suit on Wednesday as part of a collective movement to celebrate the tricolor. Opposition Congress Party also joined the movement, but with a twist. 
Senior Congress leaders, including Rahul Gandhi, changed their display pictures to Jawaharlal Nehru, India's first Prime Minister, holding a tricolor. The United States and Taliban officials have accused each other of violating the 2020 Doha Agreement after the killing of Al-Qaeda leader Ayman al-Zawahiri in Kabul in a U.S. drone strike. Top aides to President Joe Biden have slammed the Taliban for letting the terrorist leader live in the Afghan capital and have vowed to hold the militant group accountable. After the killing of Al-Qaeda leader Iman al-Zawahiri in Afghanistan in a U.S. drone strike over the weekend, Washington and Kabul have accused each other of violating the 2020 Doha Peace Agreement. U.S. President Joe Biden said justice has been delivered. As he confirmed on Monday, the precision strike was ordered by him against 71-year-old Zwahiri, one of the accused of 9-11 attacks that killed nearly 3,000 people. An Egyptian surgeon, Zwahiri had a 25 million U.S. dollar bounty on his head and succeeded Osama bin Laden after his killing in 2011. White House National Security Spokesman John Kirby in a press briefing on Tuesday accused the Taliban of taking steps to try to cover up evidence of sheltering Zwahiri, while Taliban spokesperson Zabiullah Mujahid previously said the strike violated international principles. Um, and number two, we've communicated very directly with Taliban leaders um, uh, our views of, of uh, their willingness at at some level, of course, to, to harbor uh, Zawahiri and, uh, and his family. Um, and we have made it clear that not we believe, not we think, not we suppose, but we know that that's a violation of the Doha Agreement. Under the 2020 Doha Agreement, the U.S. and Taliban had agreed that American and allied troops will withdraw from Afghanistan over guarantees by the Taliban that it will not allow terrorism to be nurtured on Afghan soil. In news from Pakistan, PTI leader Fawad Chaudhry in reaction to Pakistan government's announcement that it may file a declaration against Imran Khan's party in the Supreme Court said it is not up to them to ban the former premier or the party. This comes a day after Pakistan's election commission ruled that Khan's party PTI received millions of dollars in illegal funds. <laughs> Pakistan Tehreek in Saf PTI leader Fawad Chaudhry on Wednesday said that it is not up to the Pakistan government to ban former Prime Minister and PTI chairman Imran Khan and his party. His statement came a day after the Election Commission of Pakistan on Tuesday ruled out that the PTI received illegal funds from foreign countries, including United States, the United Arab Emirates, the UK and Australia. Addressing a press conference, Fawad said that a reference has been filed against Chief Election Commissioner Sikandar Sultan Raja and PTI will appeal against the Election Commission's decision. He alleged that PDM Pakistan Democratic Movement Alliance had met the Chief Election Commissioner before the verdict was announced. This is a very big challenge for the Code of Conduct. And before the Election Commissioner and his members have been in the PDM leaders and with their pending case, they have been in the discussion of the Code of Conduct. Interior Minister Rana Sanaullah hailed the election agencies on Tuesday ruling and said it made a 100% correct decision. Khan's PTI would be dissolved if the Supreme Court upholds the declaration of the government, he added. Meanwhile, reports have surfaced that Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif's government has decided to put Imran Khan as well as other party leaders on the exit control list following the top electoral authorities' verdict in the foreign funding case. Moving on, activists of Baloch National Movement recently staged a protest outside the Pakistan Embassy in London against the fake encounters by Pakistani forces and the human rights violations in Balochistan. They highlighted several innocent Baloch civilians have been target of so-called counter-terrorism operations by the Pakistan Army. Members of the Baloch National Movement recently held a protest outside the Pakistan Embassy in London against a rise in fake encounters and the human rights violations by Pakistani forces in Balochistan. The activists raised slogans and highlighted the recent killings of 11 abductees in Balochistan's Ziarat district 
and said innocent Baloch are being tortured inhumanly and killed by Pakistan army in the name of encounters which are staged. They urged international community to hold Pakistan accountable for heinous war crimes in Balochistan. Pakistan is committing crimes against humanity. It is the day will come when Pakistan will be tried for its crimes. And we want to tell the international community that that day should come sooner rather than later to, to save and protect Baloch people from the genocide and abduction and killing and destruction of Baloch people. Activists have long accused that Pakistani army and its spy agencies have been carrying out so-called military operations in the region with an aim to eliminate the Baloch people, especially in the wake of CPAC, the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. They blame thousands have been internally displaced because of the army operations over the years. A news from Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka's new president Ranil Vikrame Singhe on Wednesday told the parliament that the island nation will restart bailout talks with the International Monetary Fund in August, while calling on lawmakers to form an all-party government to resolve a crippling economy crisis. Sri Lanka's new president Ranil Vikramasinghe on Wednesday called for a unity government to overcome the country's crippling economic crisis in his first major address to parliament since taking over. The island nation of 22 million people is facing its worst financial crisis, with its foreign exchange reserves at record lows, leading to a steep fall in government revenue and persistent shortages of essentials, subsequently sparking public anger. Vikramasinghe told lawmakers discussions with the International Monetary Fund for a four-year program that could provide up to $3 billion would resume in August. He also said that constitutional amendments were required to curtail presidential powers, indicating he would meet a key demand of protesters who forced out his predecessor, Gotabaya Rajapaksa. <laughs> Opposition lawmaker Harsha De Silva in a series of tweets backed the president's proposal for a unity government to work on a common minimum program with an interim budget likely to be presented within weeks. Vikram Singh said his government was working on a long-term economic plan. This would include bringing down public debt from its current level of 140% of Sri Lanka's GDP to less than 100% within 10 years and creating a budget surplus by the year 2025. India has the most affordable medical facilities in the world and the people from abroad, especially SARC countries, visit Indian hospitals to avail the healthcare services. After a gap of almost two years due to the coronavirus pandemic, medical tourism in the country is gaining momentum as the government lifted travel international restrictions. Affordable treatment and good medical care have opened gates for patients from across the world to come to India once again and take advantage of the facilities after years of coronavirus lull. Medical tourism in the country is gaining momentum as the government lifted travel international restrictions after a gap of almost two years. With the world returning to normalcy and restrictions to curb the virus no longer being in place, Patients from Southeast Asia, Middle East, Africa and SARC, South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation Region, have started coming to India amid declining cases of coronavirus. We are seeing a huge influx of international patients who were not able to come to India for last almost three years. So we are seeing a almost 300% uh, uh, rise in the number of uh, OPD as well as uh, inpatients uh, after the COVID crisis. Cities like New Delhi, Mumbai and Surat are some of the places that are hosting international patients who have failed to get the desired treatment at affordable prices in their homeland. Because of the lower cost, I came from India, I choose India and I came to India. They, they all the check up, they, 
solve my problem. And the problem was all surgery of hip replacement. They did it well and are okay now. Most patients come to India for a bone marrow transplant, alternative medicine, cardiac bypass, eye surgery and hip transplant. As per Medical Tourism Index 2020-21, India stood at number 10 in the overall ranking. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.